Hey everyone, uh, this is a uh, tutorial how I use Flexi and Aspire um, to make my ACM signs. Um, this specific sign, I have two of them, 24 by 30, 24 by 24. Um, and I do all my designing work in Flexi. So with this being said, I have to set up um, two files. And this being my original file, and this is the one that I actually work off of. So the 24 by 30 is what we're basically going to do. Um, so you can see that this file has already been um, done, and I've actually already printed both of these signs. Um, and so you can see that in Flexi, this is, uh, this is the print, and you can see the small gray line there, and that is my cut line. And I always overprint, so I create about an eighth of an inch bleed, whatever you're comfortable doing to align the sign up. Um, now, I don't always get it perfectly lined up within an eighth inch all the way around the perimeter of the sign on the substrate. So that's why I create at least an eighth inch um, bleed between the two. You can see the second line right here. This is going to be my ACM sign substrate. And you can see where the cut path is. Um, let me flip it over this way. So this is the ACM sign. And then this is the overprint, um, the bleed, as you will, um, on the print. So um, again, like I said, I already have these printed, but I just wanted to show you. Um, so with this, what I do is I clear, separate the cuts, ungroup everything. And with this, I make sure that my dimensions are correct. When I would, now, when I do a 24 um, by 30 sign, it's in a nutshell. Like I said, the yield is so much better when you um, do your signs in, in inches instead of half inches. So if this sign was a true 24 by 30, that means you would actually, um, your panel size for what you're seeing, seeing would have to be, you know, 24 and a quarter, 24 and a half by, um, you know, 30 and a half or whatever it is. I use a eighth inch uh, bit when I cut these, but I figured that, uh, you know, the, the, the yield for when I actually cut these signs. So when, when I do a 24 by 30, I cut my panels 24 to 24 by 30. Um, the yield through a four by eight panel is so much easier and it's easier to keep track of and there's so much less waste when you do it like that. So this panel, this ACM panel is actually going to be 29 and 3 eighths by 23 and a half. So I'm going to take this panel and I'm actually going to export it into my, uh, my Aspire file. My Aspire production files is where I keep all of my, um, my EPS sign um, templates. And these are the ones that I'm actually going to pull into Aspire to set up the G code to cut. So if that file is exported as a normal EPS, that's all I ever do. Um, so I'm going to go back out here and I'm going to uh, get my Aspire. Um, so I'm going to create a new file. And um, so my job size is going to be 30 by 24. And I know that my thickness is 0.125. That should be fine for what I'm doing. Um, the rest of it's fairly easy. Uh, I go up here and I go back to my Aspire file or my Aspire folder and look for my JPW and I'll probably cross over it several times before I actually see it. That being said, I'm going to center this on my panel and open up my tool paths and I'm just going to do a profile to tool path and I actually have my depth set a little bit deeper uh, just to make sure that uh, it'll cut all the way through the ACM. Um, I'm going to go to my my tools and I'm going to edit these. So I use the stock eighth inch um, cutting bit that comes with carbide um, and um, I just use those standard settings. Now as you can see like I said, my feed rate is about 80, or my feed rate is 80, and my plunge rate is 40. Um, I've learned this is probably about where you want to be with good, um, you know, chipping and, and all that other good stuff. My blade is getting a little dull, so I can tell that there's a little bit of roughness um, on the finished 
um, ACM sign, but for the most part, this works pretty well. So I'm gonna leave all this and set that there. And the only thing that I'm going to do is, what is that, JPW24 by 30. And it's just a profile. That's all I'm really doing. So I'm just gonna tell me it's gonna cut through. Perfect, because that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to preview the toolpath. And so that's what it's gonna end up cutting. That's perfect, that's what I need. I'm gonna select both of these, close this, and I'm going to save the file on my other computer that has, um, I think it's, I, I, I use Carbide Motion. So that's the, the standard software that comes with it. And that is on Gateway and C, and I go to production files, JPW 24 by 30, and I hit save. So in that, in a nutshell, um, that's done and ready to go. So then I'm gonna hop over to the CNC, import that, and show you how complicated that that actually is, which it's not. So I use a quarter inch Comatex. Um, as you can see, this thing's been gouged yeah. here. Uh, Make sure that it's square. 64 I use my Rockler hold downs. Okay, so one little thing here is so on this file, on this sign, you can see how these radius corners are really, really tight. And you can see on uh, those corners because I only cut it 24 by 30 I don't have a lot to hold down that corner so I am going to use the tiny ones just to barely hold on I don't need much it'll be tight and it'll be closed but I definitely don't want to cut any of those things any more than I already have <clears throat> And that one we're just going to let ride. And connect cutter. Jog. Let's go to home. We're going to put it back rapid position. Zeros. Zero all. Done. I'm going to open. And it says right here. That's what's in there. Click the run button. All right, so now that my son is cut, I'm going to take that nonsense off. And do the same here. Like I said before, my blade is a little more, and when it's cutting, these edges tend to get really rough. Um, you can see the burrs on there, but uh, I'm going to show you how I fix that. With my little friend here, uh, it's a deburn tool. And all it does is it has a blade that, uh, that swivels on these bearings. And essentially, I just go around the edge and clean off all the, uh, the extra nastiness. So... So that's how you fix bird edges on the signs. All right, I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. Um, if you have not heard of substanceincorporated.com, you need to look them up if you print your signs and you've never heard of this company. Um, these guys are located on um, 
One's on the East Coast, one's on the West Coast. They have two distribution warehouses. Um, where we get ours is from North Carolina. And um, I've got 230 bucks shipped into these rolls of vinyl, these rolls of material. And um, again, like I said, the other companies, they can't match it. It's, uh, it's great stuff. We've been using it for every bit of four years now. Made in the USA. I've said that. Time to get back to the sign. All right, so now that I got my blank done, substrate, take my stripper that I use on a lot of things. Right. I'm having to stripper this a lot more because I had a bunch of foam on the table yesterday. Dandy 3M tape. Sure doesn't slide on me. I'm going to do the center hinge method because this substance material has an air release on it as well. Now I will say that this, this air release, uh, their adhesive is pretty tacky. Um, so it's not like it's not like an Avery where you can kind of slide it and glide it, but in the event that you get a bubble in it, all you got to do is press it and the air release goes out, so. Again, instead of using a pair of scissors, you take your fingers, and just break that little piece and make sure that your hand is, your left hand is holding down. Pull it down and away from it. Just take your fingers. And double check this. Make sure that it didn't move. It's still pretty good. And just start to squeeze it on. tape over just to make sure that my sign doesn't move on the table. <clears throat> I'm not pulling on the material, so I'm just very lightly holding it above. You don't have to put a lot of pressure when you're squeezing it because if you do, then your tape's going to come loose. Just let me get it. Over the side. We'll use my tape another day. My Ulfa knife. Press the sign down on the table. Make sure you're doing this in a place that uh, you don't mind getting scratched up. But that's why I like my acrylic. Pull that little piece out. Basically, the only thing that I am doing is I'm using the edge of the sign 
I'm pushing up against, or using the blade, I'm pushing up against the edge of the sign there. Create the sign. I don't put any heat on, I don't post heat any of this. Like I said, basically I just uh, I trim it, let it sit for a day or two, and uh, should be good. But that being said, it's one down and one to go.